In this video, we're going to start our series of Introduction to Basic Electrical. Now, electronics is going to be part of your everyday job. Okay, 90% of the problems you encounter in the field are going to be electrical. Having said that, the first two weeks of each of our terms are going to be the most important in your schooling. You will not understand anything else if you did not understand basic electrical. So what is electricity? Electricity is a fundamental element of nature. Electricity starts with an atom consisting of an electron and a proton. The electrons jump from atom to atom. This movement of electrons creates electrical current. With the use of a proper conductor, the current will move in a controlled manner and become usable. Electronics is the study of the movement of electricity through wires, switches, and loads. Conductors are substances like wire, metal, earth, and water where electrical current can easily pass. Keep in mind that the human body is a great conductor of electricity. Insulators are substances such as rubber, cloth, dry wood, and glass that resist the flow of electricity. Insulators are found on top of power poles and around the wires. Insulators are there for safety and to isolate electrical wires. Most insulation you deal with will be rubber or plastic. Electricity is produced by one of four methods. Friction, which creates static electricity. Chemically, that's how electricity is produced in a battery. Magnetism is how electricity is produced in a power plant. Mechanically is how electricity is produced in a thermocouple. An electromagnetic force is one that is created by a magnet spinning inside a wire. The current that is generated by the spinning magnet is sent out over the wires to do work. This is power, voltage, and amperage. Voltage is the potential for electricity to do work. Voltage is measured in volts. Current is the movement of electrons. Current is measured and recorded in amps. Resistance is the force that opposes electrical flow. If there were to be no resistance, then the current would run uncontrolled and would become what we know as a short circuit. Resistance is measured in ohms. Very important, if there's no resistance, the current runs uncontrolled and becomes a short circuit. We'll get more into that in a little bit. Wattage is the measurement of power. A watt equals one amp of current flowing with a pressure or a potential of one volt. Watts are used by the power companies to bill customers. There are two types of current, alternating current and direct current. Direct current is known as DC. Direct current is what is produced in batteries. It's what's used primarily in automotive. It's also used in high-tech electrical devices. Anything with a circuit board is going to use direct current. Direct current is used in a lot of the higher end and more expensive control devices. Alternating current is known as AC. Alternating current is what's available from the power company. Alternating current has a wave pattern to the voltage levels that vary between positive and negative. In the United States, this change happens 60 times per second, otherwise known as 60 hertz. This is an example of an alternating current waveform. Okay, we go, we start at, okay, we start up here at the um, zero, which is my middle line. Then we go up to maybe 170 volt max. Then we come back down through zero. We come to 170 volt in the negative, and we come back to zero. This whole cycle from zero, positive, zero, negative, back to zero is one cycle. That happens 60 times a second in the United States or 50 times a second in a lot of Europe. Frequency of the me is the measurement of the AC voltage shifts from positive to negative. Frequency is measured in hertz, Hz. It's usually based on the number of times per second. In the United States, basically North America, this is 60 hertz. Europe, it's 50 hertz. So be very aware of equipment that's being shipped overseas. Line voltage 
is the power coming in from the power company. Line voltage is a high voltage and in most cases can cause you serious harm, if not death. Line voltage is available from the wall plugs. Control voltage, in most cases, is lower voltage. Control voltage in the heating and air conditioning industry is 24 VAC. VAC is known as volts AC or alternating current voltage. Control voltage is designed to be easy to handle and safer. An electrical circuit is a full path for electricity. A circuit, no matter what it is, must consist of four parts. A source, a switch, a path, and a load. A source for a circuit can be a battery. It can be a transformer. It can be a wall electrical outlet. It could be a power line. It could be the breaker panel or it could be a power plant. It all sort of depends on where you're looking at this from and what role you're playing. A path for electrical circuit could be a wire, a circuit board, or a piece of grounding scrap. A path must have a very low resistance. This allows electrons to move freely and without heat. A path with high resistance will heat up. A switch is basically a valve or a gate that stops the free flow of electrons. It does this by opening the path. Now we add two more terms. Open is a gap or opening in the path of a circuit that stops the flow of electrons. Closed is a path that is complete that allows the flow of electrons. So a switch is either open or closed. Open equals off, closed equals on. It's exactly the opposite from a water valve. The load is a portion of the electrical circuit that actually does the work. This could be a light bulb, the work is creating heat and light. It could be a motor. The work is turning the shaft. It could be a heat strip. The work is putting off heat. It could be a coil. The work is creating a magnetic field. Pictures of circuits are called schematic diagrams. These diagrams are composed of symbols that represent each part of the circuit. These symbols are called schematic symbols. This is the schematic symbol of a basic circuit. We have L1 and N, which tells us this is a 120 volt circuit. We have a switch, that's the little gate looking thing, labeled SW1, and we have a load labeled B1. We're gonna call that a light bulb, bulb one. Basic circuit, so we have our source, we have our path, which is the connecting wire, we have our switch, SW1, and we have the load, B1. We have two different types of switches at least, but two that I'm going to mention right now. We have a single pole, single throw switch. We have a single pole, double throw switch. The pole basically is the number of incoming wires. The throw is how many options I have. Double pole, it could be on in both directions. Single throw, it's either on or off. The pole and the throw. This is a single pole double throw switch. When it's up in the when it's up in this area here, this is a connection. That's one option. When the line comes down to here, this is another option. Comes down a little bit further. Source on a schematic can be labeled L1, L2, N, or anything else. It's usually at one side of the schematic and everything else works from there. Loads are shown by either an actual schematic symbol for the load or by a circle with a letter and a key. Loads are the portion of the circuit that actually does the work. This is a more complex schematic symbol. We'll work towards this throw, but just again, you have your switch. We have our source, L1 and neutral. Okay, we have some loads could be bulbs, could be motors, could be just about anything. Okay, I have loads. I actually have a load here. We'll talk more about this symbol. And I have a load here. Okay, everything else in here, anything that I haven't mentioned, like the lines, which are relay contacts, my thermostat labeled T1, I have a couple pressure switches in here. Okay. These are all switching devices. So again, 
my four parts of a circuit that I have to have is very well represented here. Okay, L1 and neutral is my source. I have all the connecting wires, that's my path. And then I have switches all over the place, that's my switches. And then I have loads. There's no path between L1 and neutral that doesn't have all these different devices, source, path, switch, and load. Okay, if you're in a shop environment or if you're working on this stuff on your own time just to learn it, okay, make sure everything you're working on is unplugged and turned off when you're starting any lab work. Try to use a black wire for line voltage source, use a white wire for line voltage neutral, and use a red wire for control voltage source and an orange wire for control voltage common, which is the equivalent of neutral. There's some different terminology for the control voltage. The reason we want you to use these different wire colors is A, if you're with an instructor, it's easy for the instructor to follow. B, if you're doing this on your own, you'll always make sure that every circuit has source path switch and load. Your instructor, if you're in a shop environment, has to check all circuits before you power it up. That means before you plug it in and turn it on, the instructor needs to check it. Make sure the instructor initials your lab sheets. Okay, for the first circuit, you're going to build a basic circuit. Okay, for those of you working in a shop environment, you'll have a handout to follow step-by-step -step procedures. For those of you learning this on your own, look down in the comments below this video and you'll find out, you'll find a basic uh, link where to go to get this lab. Okay, but basically this is your shop circuit number one. We have our neutral, we have a 120 volt line, we have a service switch, a switch, and a bulb one. Okay, basically it's a light bulb circuit, it's a lamp. Service switch is the equivalent of a breaker, switch on the light, your light bulb, and back to neutral. So again, we have voltage, current, amperage, which is amperage, we have resistance. We have to have all of them. We have to have four parts of the circuit, source, path, switch, and load, okay? And be safe when you're working with electricity. Don't be scared of it, be safe with it.